Welcome to the assembly video for the Craft Tool Pro Stitch Master Sewing Machine by Sailrite. This assembly video is going to walk you through all the necessary steps on assembling your new leather sewing machine. Open each box and remove the parts and the secondary boxes within each of the boxes. There is one box that is completely empty. It is used to fill the void in the main box. Your new Stitch Master is packaged extremely well to avoid damage in shipping. The first phase of unboxing should look like this. Within this box is a guidebook. The guidebook will help guide you through all of the processes of assembly of your new Stitch Master. Open that box and you'll find a plastic bag with the guidebook inside. We recommend that you use the guidebook and this video to set up your new Craft Tool Pro Stitch Master sewing machine. When unpacking, try to keep the components and hardware within each box together. Here's what you'll find in each of the boxes. Basic tools required to assemble your new leather sewing machine are listed here. Let's get started and build the Craft Tool Pro Stitch Master. The first step in assembling your Stitch Master is to assemble the legs. Position legs on their side, unfinished sides facing in, with the feet facing you. Line up the back brace with the corresponding threaded holes. To connect it, you'll find four bolts with lock washers and washers. Loosely thread them through each of the four holes. Use a number two Phillips screwdriver to make these snug, but do not tighten them completely. Flip the legs upside down and lay the bottom brace onto a position about three and a half inches from the front of the legs. You'll find bolts with lock washers and washers and a rectangular nut as shown here. Slide the rectangular nut into position inside the leg cavity. Rotate the rectangular nut as shown, holding it in place inside the cavity of the leg. Slide it into position underneath the brace. Then thread the bolt through the rectangular nut. Do not tighten it down completely. Do this on the opposite side as well. You will have to hold the rectangular nut in place with your finger while you thread the bolt in place. We recommend installing the bottom brace about three and a half inches from the front legs. It is adjustable to your preference. Use a tape measure to confirm the bottom brace is squarely positioned, then tighten down the bolts. Next, we'll assemble and attach the treadle. Hold the treadle so that the bolt holes are facing towards you. Now place the treadle bracket over the two rightmost holes and thread the two bolts through each hole. Tighten each bolt with a nut on the back side. Then position the bolts all the way to the left in the treadle bracket slots. Once in position, tighten them firmly. Now find these two pivots, bolts, lock washers, washers and nuts. With the stand upside down, place one pivot underneath the far right slot of the bottom brace, making sure the tab is facing up, away from the center, and through the slot. Run the bolt with lock washer and washer attached up through the hole in the pivot from underneath the bottom brace. Then place the nut on top and loosely thread together. Repeat this step with the other pivot on the furthest opposite hole of the bottom brace, making sure the tab on the pivot is facing up and away from center. Notice that the pivot posts are facing towards the center on both the left side and the right side. That's where the treadle will eventually be attached. If you've done it correctly, here's what it should look like. To attach the treadle to the bottom brace, flip the treadle upside down with the treadle bracket facing the back leg brace. Line up the holes on the sides of the treadle with the pivots and slide the pivots into the treadle. Center the treadle with the stand and tighten the pivots. The treadle must be able to pivot freely without left or right play. Using a crescent wrench on the nut and a number two Phillips screwdriver, you can tighten down the pivots. After tightening, ensure that the treadle can move freely without any binding. 
If not, make adjustments again. Next, we'll attach the legs to the tabletop. Place the tabletop on the floor with the top side down on a soft surface to avoid scratching it. Notice that the belt slot in the tabletop is pointing towards the back portion of the legs, where the back brace was mounted to the legs. Line up the back pilot holes first in the table with the leg mount holes. Find these hex head lag screws, lock washers, and washers. Run a lock washer onto the screw first, then a large washer. Loosely thread the screw into each back pilot hole first, not the front one, the back ones. Since it is rather difficult to create new threads in the wood by hand, you may need to use a 3 8 inch socket or a crescent wrench to tighten the screw down slightly. Do not tighten it down all the way. Once the back screws are in, you can now move to the front and repeat the process. Once all four are loosely in place, you can go back and tighten them down firmly. Attaching the idler pulley to the underside of the table is next. You will find two of these remaining hex head lag screws, lock washers, and two small washers. The lock washer goes on first, then the washer. Partially thread these two screws into the two pilot holes that are next to the belt slot of the tabletop on the underside. Again, it's difficult to create new threads in a wood tabletop surface by hand, so we'll use a 3 8 inch socket or a crescent wrench and tighten down the screws about halfway. Slide the two parallel slots of the idler pulley L bracket under the washers so that the wheel portion is facing the belt slot of the tabletop. From the end of the L bracket to the belt slot, the measurement should be about two and a half inches. Now tighten the lag screws with a 3 8 inch socket wrench. Make sure the bracket is square to the table cutouts before tightening fully. Before moving on to the next chapter, flip the table structure on its feet and tighten all the bolts on the treadle with a number 2 Phillips screwdriver and tighten the bolts on the legs with a 14 millimeter socket wrench while ensuring the upright legs are vertical. Now that your tabletop and legs are all tightened down, it's time to move on to the tabletop motor attachment. You'll find three carriage bolts inside the box with the motor. Use a mallet or a hammer to pound the three carriage bolts into the three through holes through the top surface of the tabletop. The flange of the carriage bolt should rest flush with the tabletop's surface. Flip the table over again, legs up. Place the tabletop on a soft surface to avoid scratching. Within the motor box you'll find the plastic belt cover and its mounting bracket. Secure the belt bracket to the end of the workhorse servo motor using the three small screws. You'll need to orientate the bracket as shown, using the screw locations in the slots as a reference. Exacting placement is not crucial, however you should have about the same gaps as you see here. Now tighten down all of those screws. Lay the base of the motor on a flat surface, like the floor. Loosen the pivot screw on the workhorse servo motor. When the motor bracket is placed on a flat surface, like the ground, the side of the workhorse servo should be perfectly vertical with the ground. Use a triangle or a square to set the angle and tighten the pivot screw. Tilting the motor like this can adjust the belt tension, but we find when the motor is 90 degrees to the surface at its mounted to, in other words the tabletop, belt tension between the two belts is just about perfect. After the screw is retightened, check for vertical placement one more time. Now slip the workhorse servo and motor bracket onto the three carriage bolts. The table is upside down. We are working from the back side of the table, so the back portion of the motor is facing us. Then place a washer, a lock washer, and nut on top of the three carriage bolts and thread them loosely in place. 
Using a tape measure, position the motor about 7 inches from the inside leg to the bracket. More adjustment may be necessary after the sewing machine is mounted to the tabletop. But until then, we will tighten down all three of the nuts onto the carriage bolt. Flip the table so it is upright before continuing to the next step. A linkage bar will be used to attach the treadle to the workhorse servo motor. That's next. Loosen the center nut on the linkage bar so that it will slide apart. Slide it into the furthest position so the linkage bar is at the longest length and re-snug the nut. On each end of the linkage bar, take off the first nut and lock washer. Leave the remaining nut in place. You may have to readjust the length of the linkage bar when attaching it to the treadle. Bolt the linkage bar to the treadle as seen here in the video. Run the threaded bolt through the brackets hole, then reinsert the lock washer and then thread on the nut. At the top of the linkage bar, attach the threaded post through the furthermost hole on the workhorse servo motor lever. The length of the linkage bar may need to be adjusted to get that threaded post through the first hole. Then install a lock washer, then thread on the nut. Using a crescent wrench, tighten down both of those nuts. By increasing or decreasing the overlap of the linkage bar, the angle of the treadle pedal can be changed. Typically, it's set to the user's preference. However, we prefer not to have too much gap between the treadle's bottom and the floor. As mentioned earlier, the treadle must be free to move back and forth freely. If it doesn't, check the pivot pins and readjust. On both ends of the linkage bar, there is a nut. Tighten that nut up to the joint. If the linkage bar overlap is too aggressive, the pedal's angle will be extreme, and it will prevent the operation of the motor. With the pedal not actuated, this lever should come in contact with this pin. If it does not, make adjustments. Installing the oil tray and hinges is next. You'll find a bag of wood screws. There will be more screws than what is required. You will need four. The wood tabletop has a cutout for the sewing machine head. If you look closely, there are pre-drilled holes for the screws. Place the oil tray under the tabletop and line up the mounting holes in the oil tray to the pilot holes inside the rim of the tabletop cutout. Place the two hinges into the pre-made hinge holes in the tabletop and secure them with the included two wood screws, one screw per each hinge. Coming up next, installing the sewing machine and belt bracket. Remove the sewing machine from its styrofoam shell and place the face of the machine on a soft flat surface. Loosen the hinge hole set screws so that the holes are not obstructed. With the sewing machine still laying on its face, at the back you'll find a screw. It is very long. It needs to be removed from the casting. Take the smaller part of the belt cover assembly and secure it with the screw. It should be secured in place as you see here in the video. Do not worry about leveling it until the long screw is screwed almost all the way to the surface of the belt cover attachment point. Ensure that this black plastic piece is straight once it's screwed in. Look from directly above and if it's not, make adjustments. Carefully lift the sewing machine and place the hinge holes over the hinge pins of the hinges previously screwed onto the tabletop. Do this carefully so that the legs of the sewing machine or other metal parts do not scratch the wooden tabletop surface. You may need a second helper to help you guide the pins into the holes. Allow the sewing machine to slide all the way back down on the hinge pins and rest the machine on the tabletop. Tighten the set screws. Once they are both tight, pivot the sewing machine upright.
Attaching the Power Plus flywheel is next. On the end of the shaft, the posi pin will be placed in a plastic bag via a rubber band. Remove it. Set the posi pin aside and unscrew the reverse threaded posi pin nut. Slide the Power Plus flywheel onto the posi pin wheel bushing and re-thread the nut, spinning counterclockwise. Push the posi pin into the center hole of the nut for safekeeping. Installing belts is next. Use the box end wrench in the accessory box and loosen the shaft of the idler pulley. Take the shorter timing belt and place it over the big pulley of the idler pulley and around the motor pulley. Then push the shaft of the idler pulley up, tensioning the belt slightly. Place the larger timing belt over to the left of the Power Plus wheel. Feed the belt through the belt slot and onto the small pulley of the idler pulley. Tilt the sewing machine head back slightly and then feed the belt onto the cog portion of the flywheel. Then lower the head back into the tabletop. Now from underneath the sewing machine, use the box end wrench that's included to tighten up the shaft of the idler pulley. Check the tension of both timing belts by pressing in the middle of each belt. There should be equal tension between the two belts. If they are not the same, use the box end wrench, loosen the shaft of the idler pulley, move it, and then retighten it. To check belts at speed, plug in the workhorse servo motor and turn on the motor by toggling the power switch. Press on the treadle to power the sewing machine and to make sure the Power Plus flywheel is rotating from the top towards you. Both timing belts should track without side-to-side -side movement and be well clear of the belt slot edges, otherwise an excessive noise will be heard. This is incorrect. The belt is actually riding up against the flange of the idler pulley and it's making excessive noise. If you find this scenario on your sewing machine, you may need to move the motor to make adjustments. That's typically the best place to start. Here we're releasing the nuts on the carriage bolts so that we can move the motor slightly to the right as we're facing the rear of the sewing machine. And if more adjustment is needed, you can move the L bracket of the idler pulley as well. Now we're tracking perfectly. Next we'll install the support pin and the thread stand. Insert the support pin as shown here in the video. The thread stand post is pounded into the hole facing towards the front of the sewing machine. Its tapered top must be positioned up. The longest thread stand post with the looped end will drop into the back corner hole on the tabletop. Gently tap on both thread stand posts until they're firmly set in place. Up next, installing the motor cover and belt cover. Find the motor belt cover and the included small screw. Slide the motor cover over the belt bracket onto the workhorse servo motor. Thread the small screw through the hole in the motor belt cover and tighten with a number one stubby Phillips screwdriver to connect it to the motor bracket. The final belt cover part has a pointed forked end that will slide between the washer and the black bracket. The keyway cut on the belt cover will lock onto the shaft of the key of its mating component. We're almost done. Installing the light is next. To attach the LED light, place the magnetic light in your desired location. If it's a 110 volt sewing machine, the light will plug into the back of the workhorse servo motor. If it's a 220-240 volt machine, the light plug will need to plug into a wall outlet. Using an alcohol prep pad or a rag with some alcohol on it, clean the surfaces where an adhesive pad will be attached for the attachment of the wiring. These pads include a housing assembly that allows for a zip tie to be attached. The zip tie is included. You can attach the zip tie to the pad and to your wiring to keep it away from the work surface of the sewing machine. The exact location of the pads is completely up to the end user. Now the magnetic LED light has been installed and it's ready for use. And the last step, installing the spool pin and felt. Screw the spool pin into the threaded hole on the top of the sewing machine. Use a slotted screwdriver to secure it firmly in place. 
Then slide the red felt disc over the pin. Your new Craft Tool Pro Stitchmaster sewing machine is now complete. For proper operation of the sewing machine and removal of the sew-in sample, be sure to watch the Stitchmaster use video next. Thanks for watching.